scale factor affected when we're looking at two-dimensional or three-dimensional units, okay? Let me just try something here. No. I just don't like the, it's, it's kind of flickering. Maybe grayscale will do the trick here. You see how it's flickering every once in a while? I don't know. It, it bugs me. I don't know if it's just me. But it, it hurts my eyes. Okay. John, do you mind closing the blinds? Can you reach? Sorry. <clears throat> All right. Scale factors involving 2D and 3D objects. So far, we've explored how scale factors affect the dimensions of an object. Uh, but how does the how does enlarging or reducing an object affect the area, surface area, or volume? Right. Let's explore. So consider the following rectangular prisms. Assume that the original has been enlarged by a scale factor of two. Okay. So I'm going to take the original, and I'm just going to say we took that. We took every side on the on the original and came up with a new one. And we used a scale factor of two or 200%, right? So we know obviously that we have enlarged it. So we know that the dimensions, if we just looked at, at the length, the width and the height, we can just say, right? Five times two is 10 centimeters. Two times two is four centimeters. And three times two is six centimeters. So really, in general, folks, I'll give you a shortcut here. If you want, if you want the new whatever, it could be the length, width, height, all you have to do is you have to take K, scale factor, and multiply it by the original. Okay? This is a little shortcut here. That's basically what we did. We went, hey. The original is five, scale factor is two, right? We went original times two to get 10, right? So that's what we did. And I think you can all follow that, right? So we generalize that this is from now on a little shortcut for us. But I need you to see that everything is connected, guys. And I don't want to fill this up too much, but watch this. If I could just remind you, K is what? new over original right and so when you cross multiply right if you would want to know what the new is you would go original times k right that's how i derived this so it's not just out of nowhere it actually goes straight back to this one okay and sometimes i told you to put a little one right so you'd go cross multiply and divide but it's really original times k that we got the new length, width, and height. Okay. So it's always going back to this concept right here. Um, so determine the dimensions, length, width, and height of the new prism. We've done that. Check, right? That is done. Now we're going to look at the surface area. Anybody want to predict what's going to happen to the surface area between here and here? Is it going to double? Is it going to triple? Quadruple? We'll see. Okay. I think you can tell that, wouldn't you say that this box would fit in here more than twice? Wouldn't you say, right? Yeah. It's fair to say this is actually drawn to scale, right? Uh, so watch this. So surface area of the original. Let's explore that one. Uh, actually, I don't want to underline it. Sorry. The surface area original would just be, do you remember length times the formula? Maybe not. You don't really need it as much for this course. So length times height plus two width times height. That's, that's going to give you the areas of all the faces of that prism. So surface area of the original, I'm, I want to make sure you put that original there because we're going to do the new right next to it. 
So we're going to go 2 times 5 times 2 plus 2 times 5 times 3 plus 2 times 2 times 3. So I'm just following the formula. And uh, this ends up being 2 times 5 is 10 times 2 is 20 plus 2 times 5 is 10 times 3 is 30. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. So that is 62, right? 62 what? Centimeters squared. Okay, very important. Hmm. Uh, and then right next to it, I want these side by side, okay? Surface area, surface area of the new shape that we just made. By the way, I just, just for simplicity reason, I choose to blow up the new one. I could have very well made it smaller. Do you understand that? Right? I could have made it smaller. I chose to do it this way. I chose to make it, I could have made it three times bigger, right? I didn't. So surface area of the new, let's just jump right in. Two times length times width plus two times length times height. You thought you'd never use this again after IAPR, right? You're going to use it next year if you take away 12 or next semester. Some of you might take it next semester. Um, it's coming back. It's not going anywhere. So surface area of the new shape would be uh, 10 times 4 is 40 times 2 is 80. 10 times 6 is 60 times 2 is 120. Uh, 4 times 6 is 24 times 2 is 48. So that's 248. 248 centimeters squared. Very important. Let me zoom in uh, out just a little bit because I feel like I'm cutting off the edges. <clears throat> So we've got our 62, we've got our 248. I wanna, I want you to kind of box this. Did I make a mistake? No. Okay. Okay. Phew. Right. Um, so there's, there's this. Okay. So now we're gonna compare, guys. Watch this. We're gonna take <clears throat> uh, the area or the surface area in this case. Area and surface area, they both give you squared units, so I kind of put them in the same bag. Surface area of the new shape divided by surface area of the original. What would that give us? Because I want to know how many times bigger it is. So I'm going to take the 248 squared centimeters, and I'm going to take the 62 squared centimeters. And what do you get when you divide those two? I, I heard something, but I couldn't really make it. Did somebody say four? four yeah. So four. four. Okay. So you get four. So what does this tell us? That the surface area of the new shape is four times larger than the original. Do you understand that? It's not just double. It's four times. Okay. Four times larger. So we conclude as follows. Uh, how can we, what could we say if, if we doubled it, right? We actually went two squared, right? Two squared gave us that four. And you're like, why are you doing that, Mr. Dixon? Because you see that two, that's kind of like my original scale factor. So I'm gonna actually grab a green, Highlighter. This is probably not going to show on this because it's grayscale. So, but that green 
is supposed to match the two up here. Okay. Trust me, it's a green highlighter. You can use whatever color you want. Okay. I just want you to see that, hey, we doubled it. So we took that same scale factor and went to the power of two. This is very important to me. So I'm actually going to go back to color screen here. Um, what I want you to remember is this. The scale factor is two. That doesn't change. It could have been three. could have been four. It could have been 0 0.5. It could have been anything. But I always want you to know that if your units... If your units are squared, so I'm going to go up a little bit here. If your units are squared, that matches the exponent that is associated with the scale factor. So here's my grand, grand finale here. From now on, we're going to say that the scale factor squared is found by taking the surface area of the new shape and dividing it by the surface area of the original. Okay, I'm going to box that in. That should be on your study sheet. <clears throat> I don't want to have too many formulas, but follow my thought here. Could I replace this with diagram and actual? Yes. Okay. So you just know that still applies. Is it almost time? We're going to stop there. No homework. How's that? What's that? <laughs>